Right. Tim in Lansing, thanks for waiting. You're on the air. Well, thank you for having me. Hey, Tim. I, uh, was, uh, I've been debating this guy on another in an app, and he asked me to call your radio show. They asked me on the radio show what I stood for. I said, I believe the Bible is the inspired word of God, and that it is infallible. Um, okay. I don't know you from from Adam, and you know I have no opinion about anything that you say, but I do believe the Bible, and so I'm calling here because he asked me to call. Okay, so why do you believe the Bible is? It, you're saying that the Bible is infallible, and I, I don't do we? I don't think we need to waste time figuring out like if you've got a preferred <coughs> translation or, or anything. But I, I'm just wondering why do you believe the Bible? Well, because I've studied it from cover to cover. Unlike your last caller, which I couldn't even follow where he was going. Yeah, no, I, you and I were pro I was a better Christian than him when I was a Christian, and I probably still am because I spend a lot more time studying this than he'll, he'll ever do. Um, but, right. I, you know, you, you say you, you believe it because you've studied it, um, and there are plenty of other people, including myself, who've studied it, who don't agree with you. And so I'm get, I, I need, when I, when I say why do you believe it, I'm looking for a bit more than just you've studied it. Okay, uh, I'm going to take you through a scenario. I'm going to ask you some questions. Just if you don't know the answer, that's fair because I don't know all the answers. You can ask me questions. You can you can probably bring up things that would puzzle me. That's fair. Okay. Uh, but I would go home and I would study and call you back and, and try to figure out the answer. So I'm not coming here as an all-knowing person. I'm not trying to trap you into anything. I got you. But I'm giving you some evidence. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you the first question is, when was crucifixion invented? I have no idea. Okay, it was invented at 150 B.C. All right, I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. Okay, Psalms 22 is quoted by our Lord when he was being uh, crucified. Uh, Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, God why, why has thou taken, taken me? Right. Yeah. All right, now. If I said, if I was hanging on a cross, and you, I looked at you and said, Oh, Lord, my God, how great thou art, what would you think? Would, 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 you're familiar with how great thou art, right, the, the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The psalm was the Jewish hymn book. Yes. All right. And in Psalms 22, Jesus wasn't asking the questions. Jesus was referring them to a psalm. Now I want to read verse 1, and then I'm going to drop down to verse 16. Not because I'm trying to take and pick this thing apart, but I just want to, I know that you have a, a short time. I'm trying to respect you. Okay. It says, my God, my God, why has you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Okay, so we know that Jesus is referring to this psalm. Yep. Verse 16, it says, Dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Okay, let's just stop there. Piercing hands and feet. Before crucifixion, the Medes and the Persians and all those, they would impale people upon stakes. Much like Caesar impaled Christians upon stakes uh, in the first century. But the Romans loved to take criminals and really torture them. So here is a prophecy that prophesied an event of crucifixion some 850 years before it happened. And I'm talking about before crucifixion was embedded and it was 1,030 years before it happened. When I look at things like this, I base my faith upon it. So when you, when you look at what appears in Psalms and then what is written later in the New Testament with what supposedly happened to Jesus, you think the most reasonable conclusion is that one is a prophecy, the other is the fulfillment, and that everything else surrounding this is true also. Yes, and... I also will take a uh, historian, such as Arrhenius, Origen, Gustin Martyr, Marcion. I'm sure that you're very familiar with these things. Yes, and all of them are after 
Jesus supp supposedly lived, so the only thing that they're yeah. reporting is hearsay accounts. But Except for Cornelius Tactus? No. And Studius? No. Cornelius Tactus lived 52 to 50 uh, Yeah, which is, which is how many years after? So they're, 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 they were not there. To well, they're not eyewitnesses. These historians that you're okay. referencing are not, not eyewitnesses. There are no contemporary historian accounts of anything. Well, well that's not exactly true. It is he, exactly he, true. His writing, what I'm talking about is he wrote his writing at 52 to 54. It, it, it is, me, but was, let, me, let me, Tim, let me ask it. I had asked a question that you looked at Psalms and you looked at what happened to Jesus and you see one is a fulfillment of the other and then you think the most reasonable conclusion is that all the rest of the stuff surrounding this must be true, that this is the only reasonable explanation for all of it. Right? Well, that's, that's part of it, but there's other things that will be added to it. Well, I mean, uh, you, you, you said started by saying that you believe the Bible and you believe it's infallible. That's now, right. I do the believe Bible, everything around it is true. The, it's definitely true. The Bible is 66 books by a bunch of different mm -hmm. authors. Um, we don't know who the authors were in most cases. I mean, that's the, not true. The Gospels that are... That's not true. What's that? What's that? That's not true. It we is do true. know the authors of the Bible. Who, who wrote the Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, I'm sorry, but you and, simply... And, and you simply, well you simply... Tim, you simply do not understand anything about Bible authorship if you want to claim that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote the Gospels, because the Gospels are anonymous. Those are the names that the Church Fathers put on them. We have no idea who the authors of the Gospels are. How do you come to that conclusion? I'm sorry? How do you come to that conclusion? From the bulk of New Testament scholars, both Christian and non-Christian, Okay, so it's if you do you, do you happen to have do you happen to have an NIV, for example? I I, I don't uh, hold much stock in the NIV. I usually oh, okay. go back to the Greek and the Hebrew. Okay, well, I mean, if you look in an NIV at the opening page just before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it actually says that we don't know who the Gospels are. And if you go out to, oh, I don't know, Wikipedia or earlychristianwritings.com or any New Testament scholar, they all acknowledge that we have no idea who those authors are. So if you're going to assert that you know who the authors are, you, you are, in fact, unsupported in your position. But, no, but it doesn't. But it, you're unsupported because you're taking somebody that has written or uh, perverted the Bible, and that's what a new NIV is the perversion of the New Testament. I'm not Church. just referring to the NIV. I just asked if you happen to have one handy because I know it's written on the entry pages there. I'm fine with any version. It's not the versions okay. that are relevant when historians just talk about who authored this. But okay. whether or not you're correct, or I'm correct about who the authors were doesn't tell us anything at all about whether or not it's true. Okay? And you're saying yeah, you're saying that you believe the Bible is true and that it's infallible. So do you right. think it's infallible with regard to moral instruction? Yes. Is slavery moral or immoral? Bible never did back up slavery. No, you're but absolutely God, wrong. Tim, 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 Tim. No, Tim, you hold it. It's my freaking show. I'm asking I you, I'm, I'm not let you, would you, the word of God. how about I read you the word of God? Would you like that better? That would be better. Thank you. Um, so you're saying that the Bible does not, in fact, endorse slavery, correct? That's right. Okay. It didn't command slavery. So it, let me open up to Exodus 21. All right. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he's to serve with you for six years, but in the seventh year, he should go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he's to go free alone, but if he has a wife and she comes with him, then she is to go with him. And if a master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. Now, if a man, going down to verse, uh, but if a servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children and do not want to go free, then the master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door of the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl, and he will be his servant for life. If a man sells his daughter as a servant, she is not to go free as male servants do. If she does not please the master who is selected for her for himself, he must let her be redeemed. He has no right to sell her to foreigners because he has broken faith with her. If he selects her for her sons, then he must grant her the rights of a daughter. If he marries another woman, he must not deprive the first one of her food, clothing, and marital rights. If you continue on down later on in there, if uh, an owner who hits a male or female slave in the eye and destroys it must let the slave go free for compensation for the eye. And an owner who knocks out the tooth of a male and female slave must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. 
If a bull gores a, well, I'm not going to go through the rest of that. So there in Exodus 21 is uh -huh. the instructions for slavery. And it specifically has differences between, right. between Hebrew slaves and non-Hebrew slaves. The non-Hebrew right. slaves, which you are to buy from the heathens who surround you, are your property that you can pass on to your children. These, this is an explicit instruction that you can own people as property and that you can beat them as long as they don't die within a day or two. Sorry? Okay. Now, what he's doing, he's taking a people that were involved in, um, uh, you know, in uh, yeah, the uh, Egyptian bondage who were familiar with these things. They had slaves and bond servants that they brought out. Even Abraham had bond servants and so forth and slaves that came with him that would fight for him. It's not like the slaves uh, of... Um, the 1800s were the... It does, no, 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 Tim. It doesn't... You don't, I don't care about the slaves of the 1800s. The Bible sanctions owning people as property. They are your slaves. That covenant, yes. And even in the New Testament, when uh, a slave ran away and Paul tells him to go back to his master yes. and serve his master, he does. He so, does tell him to go back. So, so let me... We are to obey our masters. It, it, it does tell you that, but there's reasons for that. So, Tim, you're saying that slavery is then moral, which you just said it was immoral. I didn't say that slavery... I said the Bible didn't tell you to buy slaves. Actually, it, it not only tell, it it tells you exactly who to buy them from. It does not tell you to buy slaves. Uh, Tim, okay, so, so, so let me, let me, Tim, 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 what you're saying is because the Bible doesn't say go therefore and buy slaves, but instead it says buy, heathen, buy slaves from the heathen that surround you, that it's not instructing you to have slaves, correct? Well, that says in verse 2, if you buy slaves. Yes, if you buy slaves. If you buy slaves. Tim, Tim. You said that, that Tim, Tim, you said that slavery was immoral, correct? Is it, is it, I think is slavery it, was more, it can be immoral. It don't necessarily have to be immoral. It's not immoral to own people as property? Not necessarily, no. Well, then I have nothing further to discuss with you, because if you're going to uh, bend over backwards to make it appear that your book is moral, when it's clearly not. I mean, if, if somebody well, enslaved, if somebody, that, if somebody that, enslaved you, you Tim, Tim, if somebody enslaved you, is that moral or not? It, not necessarily, it can be. Not necessarily. So <laughs> under what conditions, Tim, under what conditions would you be okay with me enslaving you? Well, when I go to work, I'm a slave of my owner. No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I sure am. You don't have an owner, Tim. I'm asking you, under what conditions would you be okay with me enslaving you, with you becoming my property? I would not be uh, uh, willfully enslaved by you at all. Yeah, most, most slaves, by the way, aren't willfully enslaved, but you're saying that there's a condition under which it would be moral for me to own you as property, and I want to know what that is. It maybe is this condition right here. What what condition? In, in uh, Exodus 21. If in that time, you see, that law does not apply to us today. It doesn't matter whether it applies to us today, Tim. My question is about slavery. Is it moral to own people or not? It's okay in God's eyes, so it's okay in my eyes. Goodbye. Guys. That's all we needed to hear. You believe the Bible. You find it true. Slavery is okay in God's eyes. Thank you for acknowledging it. So it's okay in your eyes. And I am now more moral than you and your God, and so is everybody else on the planet. I don't understand. I, I, I mean, I understand how people kind of twist themselves in knots to defend their book. Um, but when you ask a simple question about whether or not, and what, under what conditions would it be okay for me to ens enslave you, I just watching the little tap dance there is, uh, it's frustrating. It's pretty hard to justify infallibility and perfect moralness to the Bible, so you have to do that tap dance if you're going to try to maintain that. I mean, you know, it's nice of Tim to say that it, you know, clearly slavery is okay in God's eyes, so it's okay in his eyes. Well, it's not okay in my eyes. It's not okay in the eyes of the law. It's not okay in the eyes of anyone who has been enlightened. And it certainly wasn't okay in the eyes of pretty much anybody who's ever been a slave. If you wanted to know why slavery was wrong, that's all you had to do was ask the people who were enslaved. And your book 
not only sanctions them, but it also has instructions about when they took over towns and demolished and killed everybody and then kept all the young virgins for themselves. And it, in addition to that perfectly moral instruction, there is the condition where a woman who's raped is then forced to marry her rapist. I think that you need to stop getting your morals from an antiquated book that didn't understand the truth about human interactions and instead engage a little empathy and recognize that when you see something in your holy book that conflicts with what you understand to be real, that you shouldn't tie yourself in knots to explain it away or worse, accept that the immoral is moral. I would have been much happier if Tim had said, well, the Bible's pretty good. You get some stuff right and some stuff wrong. Hey, this kind of looks like prophecy to me, so I think maybe there might have been something to that. All that would have been fine. But when you start talking about infallibility, when you start saying there aren't contradictions, when you, aren't, when you start saying that it is the best and most perfect moral guide, and that if God says that slavery is okay, then slavery is okay, you have now given up your humanity, and you are no longer worth talking to. And you need to recognize that before you can re-enter the conversation with the rest of civilized humanity. All right. Well, and I didn't really buy that that was a prophecy either. That we're, I didn't see crucifixion in Psalms anywhere. Yeah. Dogs encircle me. Did, I'm not a Bible expert, but did that ever happen? No, but um, that's, par that's uh, uh, metaphor. The dogs. The dogs of the people were the dogs. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. But, yeah, that... If you're wanting it to be a prophecy, then I think you can stretch anything to fit something else. But well, he had he had some dates wrong, like about I wasn't going to bicker over whether it was 500 years or 800 years, and yeah, you know, that doesn't matter. But when you start claiming that the New Testament Gospels were actually written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you are in no way a Bible scholar, or uh, and you haven't actually engaged in honest study of this, because there is no reputable New Testament scholar, Christian or otherwise, who will claim that the Gospels were written by the people whose names are on them. We know that those names were just traditional names applied by the church. Um, and we have no, no idea who those people are. 